there's nothing pristine about this place. It's been kicked around pretty good by man and nature. Imagine that the world is, has become an entire urban area. The, the world is a city. Where would nature be? It's going to be in little tiny patches out there, but it's still going to be important for us to study and understand. And it's sort of come true in my lifetime. It, there's more and more of the world. It's big urban areas and less and less of nature out there. And it's really important to have patches of nature set aside for us to study and understand what we're doing to the planet and understanding the role of organisms in the ecosystem and in the processes that we depend on on the planet. Um, there is no planet B. So I became a biologist because I was absolutely stunned and in awe of the beauty of nature and all the different colors that is found in nature. And so I wanted to explore and understand why the world was as beautiful as it was. And so to get at that, I needed to study evolution. I began by looking at fish underwater and trying to understand if we could predict the different colors that they would evolve um, between the species. And so clearly the origins of my interest of becoming a biologist all started from nature. So I feel very much at home being out at nature with uh, BFL. I think it's fundamental to maintain your, your creativity as a scientist to return to nature, to return to that fount of inspiration and recharge and uh, reignite new ideas and remind yourself not only why you became a biologist, but generate new ideas. Now that you've, you've developed some answers to your original questions, you can return to nature and generate more. When I graduated from high school, we basically went hiking for a month, and I had to look down at the ground uh, where I was stumbling all the time. And I just started noticing all the wildflowers. And so one of the camp directors gave me the wildflower guidebook, and I started trying to learn all the plants that I was observing while I'm hiking around. And it was, it was great, it was great to learn the plants, and it was great to be in a group of people and know something they didn't know and be able to teach them along the way. And uh, that just certainly turned me on to plants. Uh, and then over time, I, I realized what great experimental systems they are. Uh, I mean, we can grow thousands and thousands of plants, so we have high replication. We can make crosses to do breeding. We really get to observe these plants over long time periods um, and watch how their physiology and actually even some of their genomic features change over time uh, in these relatively long-lived grasses. So that is one special feature about BFL. We can set up an experiment and hope to be around studying it for an extended period of time. That's actually a really important component of our research. It is super to have a, a nice natural green space to come to do research on a regular basis, uh, you know, in an urban area. It's pretty unusual. For me, it's irreplaceable. It's a pretty trashed out environment, which is the way the world is. And students get to study recovery and restoration. You can't replace the history of knowledge and use and you can't replace the proximity for any amount of money really at this point. When you have 300 or more plant species and each of those has associated 10 to 15 species of specialist insects and then all the predators of those and the parasites of those you're dealing with, tens of thousands of organisms interacting in hundreds of thousands of interaction matrices, only a few of those things are understood. And many of those are going to be very fundamentally interesting to understanding our ecosystem. And you don't have to go to Africa or some other place. You can do it right here and find a lot of new things. So all you need are students that are open-minded and come out here and look at things.